We're good to go. Awesome. So let me grab my headset again. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're ready to rock. <laughs> We're ready to roll. Delayed, but that's all right. Delayed does not mean denied at all. It's because you have something great in store. <laughs> I know you have something great in store for everyone as well. So without hey, further ado, let's see here. So we are live, live, live on Facebook, so you'll see that video. You can press share also on your, um, on your end if you'd like. And okay. if you're ready to roll, we will roll. So good afternoon, everyone. Good. It's still morning, it's still morning. Good morning, oh, yeah. everyone. <laughs> That's still morning time. <laughs> we are live on the Inspire Her Radio Talk Show. I'm your host, Shanae Sweetness, and we have a wonderful guest today on the show. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about what's going to happen today as far as us just being enlightened and just really getting into a conversation that sometimes we deviate from a little bit. And I believe Ms. Uh, King Kevin is gonna really, um, really, really shake us today with some real good stuff. We have today someone who is phenomenal, who's doing great things, great things out there in Atlanta. Um, I'm glad you are from Florida originally, which is awesome. Yes, yes. <laughs> no yes, bias yes. there. Um, so I'll just, you know, this, this, this man, I want him to also introduce himself. I believe that he is a man that is very active in his community. Um, he's a filmmaker, an author, a community activist. I mean, a great speaker as well. Um, he's just very, very active in his community. And he's very, very big on educating the black community as well and really empowering us um, as a people. Um, I want you, Kevin, to just kind of share with our, our viewers, with our listeners on the radio, give them a little bit more insight on who you are and what you've been working on, what you've been doing and where, where everything is gonna go from today. So just let them know who you are. <laughs> Bless up, bless up, King bless Kevin up. in the building, baby. <laughs> hey, Sinead, uh, thanks for having me on your show, um, Inspire Her Radio. Uh, I, I really, really, really do appreciate it. Um, good morning, everybody. And I'm a mentor, author, filmmaker, future multi-millionaire. You forgot that part, the future multi-millionaire part. That's right, part, that's right, that's right. <laughs> you're definitely forgiven, you know. Um, to whom yes. much is given, much is required. Absolutely. And um, thanks for a great introduction. Uh, I've written uh, three books. I published two films and uh, do a lot of work in the community with our church program and our annual Black on Black Crime Solutions Panel. And which is, this will be our sixth year. So six years in the game. Uh, I'm the founder and president of, an, of our nonprofit Courage to Believe um, International, which we started back in 2014 and I'm um, still doing it. Um, from Fort Lauderdale, Miami to, to, to Atlanta. So that I encourage everyone to, you know, find, find more information. You know, I'll share my website later later on in the show. Um, you know, find out about brothers like me, kings like me that are out there on the front lines because we need our, we need our queens, you know, you know queens like you who, who obviously got me on your show to give me uh, a, a way, a, a avenue to express myself and to, to, to let it be known what I'm doing and, and, and um, what we're doing as a community because, uh, you know, there, there's no um, individual in the community, you know, it's, it's a collective effort and, and we need more black on black love more than ever. I'm sure you all can agree. And uh, yeah, so that's my introduction. I love it. I love it. I love it so much. I love it so much because what you're passionate about, um, a lot of the things that you're passionate about, I'm also passionate about. So I really felt that there was a connection and just speaking with you um, briefly, and we've, we've conversed, uh, I think about a year on and off going through, and I, I have really um, been observing you and seeing the different things that you're doing. And I really think that you're doing some great things. So without further ado, you know, I, I sent out the, the memo to a couple of those that are, that are regular viewers and they were like, hot, 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 hot. I got to listen to this this topic today. So I said, okay, make sure you're on and have your questions and everything ready. So, uh, you know, our topic for today is the state of black love and relationship in 2020. Just the topic in itself is like, okay, 
okay, where are we going with this? Where are we going with this? And this, 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 this king um, is an author of a great book. And listen, several great books, three great books. And, and I, I thought about it today. I was like, wow, I should have just bought mine online prior to our interview. So, you know, I'll be doing that. And I also want to give away a book to someone else as well. So at the end of the show today, um, those who are most involved in the conversation, those who are really um, engaging, whether it's through social media or on the radio, I'll give away a copy of King Kevin's book. Um, I think it will be very, very inspiring, very empowering for, for us women to read, um, men too. Um, but uh, for us Black women, I think it's very, very good for, for us to really empower ourselves and support one another. I love that. So the topic, the topic itself, um, the state of Black love, when I just hear it, it, it really sparks something inside of me. And, and going back to your book, um, Seven Queens. Yes, yes, yes. Woo, Seven Queens, King's Desire. Wow. Just, just that that thought. I, it really intrigued me. The title of your books. I, I love the titles of your books. It, it's it's very <laughs> it, it grab it. You makes you want to like read. Definitely, just hearing because it's very important how you how you title your book. And I think you were at a good place when you thought of that. We're, we're I don't know what your mindset was like. I would really love to hear that too. Um, how you came about the title of that book. I think it's it's very powerful. Um, just finding it in that way, it really intrigued me. And I just want to hear that thought. What was your thought process when you came up with that title? And then we'll kind of go a little further into our interview. But I want to hear, what was your mindset like when you thought of that title? Or how did you derive at it? Um, I, I came at it uh, several ways. Um, a lot of my writing, uh, I must admit, are, are spiritually based. So whenever God places something on my spirit, I, you know, I, I think about it, and, and, and one thing I like about uh, my ideas is that whenever I get an idea, and the more I think about it, the more I get excited about it. So that lets me know it's a good idea. So when when I actually wrote the um, create that title, it it was for a blog. You know, mm -hmm. um, the, the the whole book itself, Seven Times Queen You Seen Desire, which is this one that, that you're referring to. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I was going through a, a hard time in my life. I, you know, the serious breakup, and you know, and from that breakup, um, I I created this blog, and it turned into a book. And you know, from a broken heart, and and I, I realized as I was writing the book, it was like, wow, I'm, 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 what I'm writing is very condescending. You know, is um, right. I'm, I'm writing from a spirit of of, of heartache. So I kind of reversed it. So I was able to catch myself. Um, you know, from being depressed and I changed that energy, which we all have the option to use our negative energy to something positive and that's exactly what I did. So, and the woman that I, I was gonna marry, I thought she was the one. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, if she's not the one, then then who is the one? You know, if I, I'm a king, what type mm -hmm. of woman do I want? What mm -hmm. type of woman do I desire? Mm -hmm. And the number seven is the number of divine completion yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's so many different components to the number seven, very special number. By the way, my, my birthday is February 7th. So, wow. um, so that's why I put seven on there. And so wow. the book isn't about seven women, but it's right. just, um, seven components that every woman, um, should offer, not just to her man, but her family, her community. Mm -hmm. Um, most women don't understand and definitely most guys, because I didn't either. Mm -hmm. um, don't understand their divine sacred energy, and yeah. that's something that isn't taught to to, to women or or our, our black community, um, not in schools, not in churches. And mm -hmm. unless your parents are conscious individuals, you're not going to learn that from home. Mm -hmm. And and so I took it upon myself to create a book, not just about what I want, but what is it what is it that the world needs, you know? Yeah. Um. So. It's a compare and contrast of ancient queens with women of today, with an emphasis on black queens. Even even on a book cover, um, mm -hmm. I have a big one blowed up behind me. But even on the book cover, you can tell there's several women on there. Actually, seven. Majority of these women are all black women. Yeah, Michelle Obama, right. Queen right. Offset, who I'll get into. Yeah. Um, Flojo, Florence Griffin, join us. The track yeah. star from back in the in the 80s, but she's not yeah. in the book because her athletic skills is what she was doing in her community on mm -hmm. top of her skills. 
and a couple of women representing um, African descent. Um, and I also have Princess Diana, which is controversial because a lot of people don't like, uh, especially black folks, you know, um, pro-black people really dislike the fact that I have Princess Diana on the cover and that's just featured <laughs> in the book. Yeah. But you know, like they say, um, and I wish I would have said this at, at an event that I was at, there was a woman that was attacking me for putting a white woman on the cover. But yeah. like I told her, don't judge a book by its cover. You That's know what I'm right. saying? But what she did for the black girls in Ethiopia, the black women, mm -hmm. black young girls, and boys as well in Ethiopia, mm -hmm. um, definitely deserve um, to be uh, recognized and honored. So, mm -hmm. but you have to read the book to find out what, what that was. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's how I came out uh, with the book. I was on also on an interview with with a woman named um, Queen Code, and, yeah. and 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 she 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 actually. Um, inspired me to, to to push forward with the book, and yeah. even when I didn't have completely had the title yet, she you know she really pushed me to to do it because when I was on her show about four or five years ago, uh, she never received so many calls or inquiries about a male guest before. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I'm tall, dark, and handsome. I don't know if the was, <laughs> but um, but but she definitely played a big part in me pushing forward. So shout out to the Queen Code, and yeah. uh, thank you uh, for allowing me. Uh, on your show again for show beautiful listen i haven't even finished and i will because i'm taking a little i'll call it a staycation in, in jacksonville florida and a little bit i'll be on the road um so i will be taking that time to really really uh just just soak in this interview and i'm definitely going to purchase the book and i think i may purchase for my friend as well and I want to give away to somebody today. So uh, no I really thank want to you, support you. you. I really want to support you. I love what you're doing. I love what you stand for. And in your book, you, as we were just talking about, there are certain faculties or certain things that we should learn or um, components to womanhood that we should adapt to or be aware of, right? And you wrote, you wrote about, um, you wrote about women in seven types of queens, right? But Correct. what about this? What about the men in, in, in that? You kind of like left the brothers out. So what about them? <laughs> oh, no doubt. Um, I was actually going to talk about that later on in the show about mm -hmm. um, what I have coming up. But let me address that since you brought it up. You're the queen, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. your wish is my desire. Um, mm -hmm. Seven types of kings. Now, before I answer that question, let, let me make this, this statement. Yeah. Everything starts with the woman. Everything. Mm-hmm. Um, life itself, women, you're the first teachers, um, mother gods, queens of the universe, mother yes. nature. So yes. it was only fitting to start with the women. Yes. Because if the women aren't right, the men would never be right. And obviously, th this is what we're looking at right now in society before okay. the COVID-19. So that has not changed. Um, not much, but maybe slightly more because I, I'm, I'm beginning to see a change in women, especially black women. Um, mm -hmm. that weren't supportive to men before, or a lot mm -hmm. more understanding, like, wow, you guys really do got it hard. You know, the right. system has really pushed us against you all. And that's been going on since the Willie Lynch letters. As a matter of fact, yeah. Willie Lynch always, you know, believed and wrote in his letters that, hey, you know, don't hurt the woman, destroy the man, protect the woman so that she could depend on you, you as the mm -hmm. white man. Mm -hmm. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So mm -hmm. um, now that, I, now that I've, I, I've stated that, Seven kings, seven types of kings, seven types of kings, queen's desire will be coming out in 2021. It'll be coming Ooh. out next year. I've been working on it for quite some time now. Um, it's long overdue. I, I, I definitely can't wait to write it. Um, not write it, but publish it because mm -hmm. men badly need this. Now with the women, the, the, the seven queens, I, you know, I was able to be a little more feminine and soft and more, uh, you know, you, I was very careful with the yeah. word, my word choice, because, you know, I didn't want to offend women and, you know, to think that this book was about bashing women, because it's not about right. bashing women at all. Right. Like, seriously, it's right. not. Um, uh, feminists, you know, women's groups, <laughs> um, some mm -hmm. of them are, are automatically by the title, oh, this is, oh, you, you, you are subject, subjugating us to do whatever men want. No, this is not right. about that. It's about edifying our women, understanding yeah. your beauty. I don't care how... Yeah how much money you have or how big yeah. your butt is or breasts or how much weave you have, how much money you make, what kind of material possessions. This is more of a spiritual enrichment book that would enlighten you 
on the history of real queens because yeah. every woman is a queen in her own way but every woman should read this book because once you want to know what real queens did to to attract the leaders of ancient mm -hmm. times like what, what mm -hmm. was it about them because mm -hmm. we've deviated so far from tradition that yeah. many simple things such as um man of the house or women of the house or different roles we have it's been yeah. so diluted and confused that there, there's no clear lines on what our roles are mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so yeah. this book um definitely you know clarifies that uh <laughs> and yeah. um like one of the chapters the cooking queen you know i run to a lot of women who don't don't want to cook not even mm -hmm. for themselves not, not, right they come out feeding me but not even for themselves they'd rather go spend all the excessive money eating at these restaurants, posting pictures of their food at these restaurants and, 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 and selfies and things like that, um, spending God knows how much money when you could have been saving and only spending a fraction of that if you were to cook your own meals. And besides, cooking is therapeutic. Right. You know what and I mean? So I love this book. Hmm? I saw that interview with the girl, with the, the, the queen who does the queen code, I believe it was. The one on yes, the yes. I, I just mentioned her and earlier. She talked mm -hmm. about, she talked about cooking in a way that I like never heard any woman talk about except probably my grandmother you know um and and it was very very powerful how she stated how it is also like as you said therapeutic she also therapeutic. mentioned that that is a way for you to show love and minister love and sometimes we really don't think of those things um that are so simple but we, we, we just, you know, make it seem as if it's so minute. Oh, that's the least. What, what, how, does, how is that relevant to, to me being a woman? That's just a role. It's not really a role. You know, it, it's more to it than that. And as you said, if we look at things on a more spiritual sense, we will kind of get back to our identity and, and claiming who we are as queens. So um, just, just going back a little bit, um, as you mentioned, you know, some people are, are a little taken back just off you know, off the fact that you included um, Princess Diana on that, which is pretty interesting. I, I want to hear a little bit about that later. But um, as far as the role of the household, aren't the okay. same, aren't there, they, we know that they aren't the same anymore, right? You know, the, the women movement, you know, that how women are more empowered and independent now. Um, women are, are nurturing and, and men are becoming more, you know, feminine. Extremely feminine. Why is that? Why is <laughs> mm -hmm. that? Like, why is what's happening? What's really going on here? I mean, if you look at it, like from the 1950s, 1960s, where uh, in the black community, the man was more prone to be at, at home. He was he was in the community. He was involved in his ch children's lives. Mm -hmm. um, he was working, working with his hands. Mm -hmm. A lot of those things has been taken away from from our community. You know, the, the yeah. big. Uh, manufacturers, car manufacturers, tires, yeah. um, you know, computers. Um, a lot of those businesses has gone, you know, international. So they, their, their, their plants aren't in the U.S. They aren't in the big cities like Chicago and uh, Detroit, Miami. Now, a man, his manhood is tied to his ability to provide for himself and for his family. Mm -hmm. And the system, dating back to William Lynch again, um, history has a way of repeating itself. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. when I say that, you would notice that you mentioned the women's groups. Now, the women's groups movement, these women conferences, these things, plus the fact that these, these factories, uh, these, these working plants aren't there anymore, mm -hmm. it's actually caused the men to feel inadequate and not have a place in the home not even in the equation anymore. He's, he's insignificant. Right. Um, I almost felt that way. So I can only imagine, and you no, know, I have a college degree, a bachelor's in political science. I've owned a few businesses. I own one right now. And I've, I've done quite a, quite a bit, but my story isn't frequent enough. A lot mm -hmm. of men are, they have turned to and it's fell for the trap of this materialistic world where everything's mm -hmm. based on how much money you have and uh, mm -hmm. what kind of car you drive. As a matter of fact, some men can't even see their children unless he has money, unless he, right. you know, especially these condescending um, sisters and not just sisters, but we're talking about black queens here. 
they don't even let the, kid, the, the the father see the sons anymore, the daughters anymore. So, mm-hmm. and he doesn't have any money. So what he's gonna do? He's gonna sell drugs. He's gonna rob. He's gonna steal, kill, destroy. Do whatever he gotta do to get that money to see his so children, right. or to be honored and respected as a king. Now, mm-hmm. a man, a father does a lot more than just provide financially. He provides spiritual support, emotional support, and he guards and protects and, and provides for that home. You have all of these attributes are no longer there, which means the woman is left by herself to fend for herself and to do whatever she got to do to survive and to provide for her children. And so this system, this capitalistic system, the this, this system of oppression has mm-hmm. caused many of our families to be dismantled. Even everything is about empire. This, there's an empire spirit. I was just watching a video um, uh, yesterday, and I, I watched it before by a pastor named Stephen Darby, rest in peace, is a pastor up, up that was in Kentucky. So check mm-hmm. out this video on YouTube, Empire Spirit, and he breaks down how no matter where you turn, everything is about accumulating wealth and power mm-hmm. by any means necessary. From right. the TV shows you watch, the Empire show, perfect example, so movies, true. you know, Scarface, um, Carlito's Way, Godfather, uh, the be even more up to date, the new ATL movie that came out recently that pretty much shows just drug dealing and killing. Um, mm-hmm. Social media, you know, these rappers showing this this fictitious lifestyle mm-hmm. of, you know, cars, clothes, all these things they're loaning, they're renting anyway. And it's mm-hmm. causing the younger generation to to want to acquire those things by any means right. necessary. And what happens? They end, up in pri- they end up in prison. That's why today in prison, over a million black men are in prison as we speak. Those are leaders, warriors, fathers, you know what I'm saying? Potential mm-hmm. CEOs. Instead of producing and protecting the community, they're producing and protecting their prison cells. So mm-hmm. th- th- there's definitely a huge issue that's um, far beyond the scope of this interview. But that is why um, the families are, are, are no longer... Um, quote unquote important or um, deemed as, or, or, or being championed because no matter where you look at, you're seeing single mothers and single yeah. fathers, whether they are on the streets. As a matter of fact, speaking of that, the single mothers, I've met and you know, being in Atlanta, you know, it's, it's a very crazy um, dating scene in Atlanta. I did a video called uh, Dating in Atlanta is a Zoo, <laughs> which is very wow. funny, but <laughs> I, I didn't share with you that video. No, but it's be that one. Oh man! All right. So what I'll do is I, I'll put it. I'll put it in the chat. But it's actually my second highest, most viewed video. And I was just playing around. It was my birthday mm-hmm. when I first moved here to Atlanta, and I just kind of spoke about my experiences dating in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if it's, it's the same thing still in Florida, which I kind of experienced. But a lot of women are now as actually turned to prostitutes. Wow. They they are selling their bodies uh, for a few dollars. Um, whether it's from online, Instagram, Facebook, um, the, the mm-hmm. online dating sites, and pe- they're not working. They don't understand their value. So they, they're coming to guys, you know, uh, under the uh, false pretense of wanting to date, but they're really going to ask you for a cash app, cash app me some money. Can you pay this bill? Can you do that? Mm-hmm. Instead of, because well, why is that? Because they grew, uh, majority of them grew up single, single parent home. They, they seen how their mother was getting money from different men, sleeping with different men to get money. And so they've, they've emulated that behavior and, and to right. what we have now with these smartphones. I mean, they're probably texting. I probably get two, three texts a day or even cash app um, requests from different from different women. Women I, I never even met, don't even know. So it's, wow. it's, it's definitely a different culture and we need yeah. it. And we must get back to the original traditional families where the man understands his role as a man, protecting, providing, and the woman understands her role as a woman, um, nurturing, and definitely her divine, sacred energy, which gives birth to everything, not just babies, but give birth to ideas and businesses. That's that's what made the kings and queens, um, the leaders of, of ancient Africa so great, because they understood to, to protect the woman, you're going to get wisdom. Why do you think they have so many of these great big statues and edifices, pyramids, um, monuments, um, things that still boggles the mind today. Scientists don't even know how to even build those things. They Correct. built them because they understood and they utilized the, 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 the powers of the divine woman, the mother gods of the earth. 
And so what you what you honor, you're gonna protect. And right now, black men, we're not honoring our women. I, I can't tell you how many videos I've watched myself, whether it's the news or on social media, of when of men, black men, also white men, of course, police brutality, but black men beating up women and taking this cool and they're proud of it. So mm-hmm. our value systems need to be reevaluated because the state yeah. of relationship to 2020, if it doesn't get if, if it doesn't get better, then it's possible that we won't even have a black community. Correct. I agree with you. One and I could go on and on about that. So don't get me started. Let's go. Listen, I agree with you 100 percent And we, we as you said, you know, there there's so many different things that are at, that are contributing to this this messed up uh, mindset that we have, this, of course, there's systems in place. And while we can acknowledge what the problem is, if we don't take the initiative to say, listen, there is a problem, I need to get back to my roots. I need to, I need to define who I am. I need to remember who I am and go back to just loving me and understanding who I was created to be. If we don't get back to that place, as you said, we'll be extinct after a while. Like really, like I honestly believe that and I've had conversations about that. And it's it's really, really sad, um, you know, where some of us, some, I would say, because they're not a lot, they're not, it's not everybody, of course. There are some people that are very aware of who they are and they're walking in that and, and proud and all of that. And I, I remember just the other day, I was just doing my nails and I was overhearing a, a woman, um, I won't disclose her race, but I was overhearing a woman and she was saying that, uh, oh, the technician was saying, hey, you're looking for a man or whatever. And she's like, yeah. And he was, you know, introducing himself, you know, the nail technician was telling the woman about another man. And she said, does he own the shop? Because if he doesn't own it, he can't call me. And I was like, (laughs) only value? Like that's the only value he should have is that he's an owner of a shop and to her, that means money. So if, if you ain't got that, don't even come this way. So regardless of your character, regardless of everything else, money. And I was money. just shaking my head. I was like, because they were loud. So I, I heard their conversation. I was just shaking my head like, boy, it's sad. It's really sad what we've come down to. And, you know, we really got to really, 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 really got to get to the root of the issue and really talk about um, redefining ourselves. Oh, man, man, man. So who is your favorite queen or leader in your book? I would I would have to say um Queen Azinga. Mm-hmm. No, she she was the um she was the warrior queen um in, in Angola. And mm-hmm. she, you know she fought the Portuguese. Uh Angola is a southern Angola and Congo is, is a, like southern regions, southern central region of, of Africa. She mm-hmm. fought the Portuguese for 30 years. Um, against slavery, so they wouldn't escape her people. And the re- and, and the reason, on top of that, the reason why I really like Queen of Zing is because her brother, who was the next in line to be king, which he actually was the king, mm-hmm. she she ended up killing her brother because he was selling um, their people to the Portuguese yeah. just yeah. for slavery. And so when I found that out, I'm like, wow, that's what I call mm-hmm. dedication. Right. It's like, you know what I mean? Like, how dare you tell our people, you know, because you made yourself an enemy. Even though we're brothers and sisters, you sold out our people. So therefore, yes. you're an enemy. Yes, you're going against You know what I mean? So cause. so I, I, I love her story. And the fact that I didn't find out about her um, until, what, maybe right before I published my book, I had to include her in the book when I found that story out. And I did mm-hmm. a lot of research. And um, I just found her to be a very intriguing woman. And mm-hmm. that um, and a, a, another thing that I would like to, another example I'd like to give about her is that, you know, the being that, first of all, um, in many cultures in Africa, there were um, matriarch societies, meaning that mm-hmm. women, um, not, they ruled, but the men had a role as well in protecting. You know, they just they yeah. s- sought wisdom from the woman and the, the, the woman provided uh, the ideas, um, spiritual powers, um, mm-hmm. being able to foresee the future, things like that. I mean, mm-hmm. I could get on and on about that. You have to get the book to read the book to to, to, to understand what I'm saying. Yeah. But one thing I like about her is that when, at some point in time, because of Africa being colonized, 
um, when the Europeans came and colonized, you know, the motherland, mm -hmm. it turned into a patriarchal society where men yeah. were ruling now because, you know, you needed men are more aggressive. So, and the country, you know, the countries the in Africa needed to be protected. So, so in their country, um, her father died. She, uh, her brother became ruler. She killed her brother. And the, the people that, that was in their kingdom, the warriors didn't want to respect them. Many of them didn't want to respect it because she was a woman. So she's a woman, but she's gangster at the same time, not somebody you want to play with. This was this was a true uh I want to say alpha female, you know what I mean? So what she did was one of the top generals. So instead of like imprisoning or trying to kill off all the top leaders in in her kingdom, what she did was she set an example with with, with the, the highest leader. So what she did was she went to she went to his, his his property, got all her men, um, got got her men with her, and killed all his cows, all of them except for one. And the reason why she did that was because she wanted um, them to understand, well, him to understand, yeah, you are the top general, but mm -hmm. I'm the queen, and if, when I call for you, you come to me because he didn't want to answer to her calls when she was sending messages for him to come visit her so he could discuss some battle plans. So, mm -hmm. but when he seen that she slaughtered all his cows except for one, then he got the message that, look, I may be a woman, but don't play with me. Right. So, so I, I, I definitely, I definitely respect it. I respect her gangster ever, ever since I read that story. <laughs> wow, <laughs> wow, listen, now, I'm definitely more um, anxious to read the book. Definitely more anxious to read the book. Wow. And, and something kind of sparked in my mind. Um, okay. You okay. Know, just going back to um, what you mentioned, how these, these, these powerful women and um, a lot of times women get defensive um, when we talk about embracing our femininity and, and, and things like that. And when we talk about submission, just certain things Women of today tend to get a little bit more defensive and, and agitated when they hear the topic because they feel as if it means that they're inferior. They feel okay. that it means that they don't have a certain level of importance or value to contribute. Um, and just thinking, I, I, I watched this young lady, this young woman by the name of April Mason on, um, I follow her on Facebook and she oftentimes talks about um, not saying that you don't need a man or that you um, are independent of one, you okay, know, not, okay. you know, in, in that way where it's more so where you're over the top, big headed about yourself and who you are. What are your thoughts on women of today as far as why is there, because, you know, what I wanted to really ask is black men in particular um, are sometimes afraid to commit, um, you know, they have the fear of marriage, um, you know, they, they have different reservations about us um, because some may say, you know, oh, black women, they don't really, they're not, they're hard to deal with, you know, we're too strong headed and all this kind of stuff. What do you think is the reason for, I'm, I mean, there are so many con, there are so many things that are causing this, but how do you think we can get back to mending some of these fears and reservations that our brothers may have about us? I mean, quick starters, a man has to be able to provide for himself and the system has been set up to where, you know, there's all, there's all sorts of opportunities, um, which is great, you know, for education, starting a business. And if, if you really pay attention, you'll see that there's an influx of women conferences, women programs, um, things for the young girls. As a matter of fact, I was at a I was at a, a fashion show um, in Atlanta. Uh, uh, what's her name? The lady from the Sister Circle. Uh, I think his name is uh, her name is Rashida. That's no, not Rashida. But anyway, one of the sisters from the Sister Show, um, mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Vaughn from. Mm -hmm. uh, you you know that you remember that show that Steve Harvey show back in the day with Steve Harvey, Cedric the Tainer. Yes. So the uh, Cedric the Tenor's girlfriend, I mm -hmm. can't think of her name right now, but her last name is I know Vaughn. who you're talking, yes. Right, she, she, she was the guest of honor there. I mean, beautiful event. And mm -hmm. when, 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 I, when I was watching the, when I was watching the, when I was at the event, I was, um, 
I was thinking to myself, like, okay, so these young girls, what they do is um, they start their own businesses. You know, they, they, get, they mm-hmm. get sponsorship. I mean, literally start their own businesses and products. And as a matter of fact, to be part of that, 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 that modeling club, you mm-hmm. have to start your own business. Yes. As a matter right. of fact, you have to, start, you have to create a product. Some of them right. have their own makeup, lotion, lip gloss. And I'm talking about girls that are like, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. And I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. Imagine if I was able to do something like that at their age or be right. part of a program like that. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm in Atlanta. This is the mecca of Black love and, and, and definitely of, of Black woman movement, Black queens. I'm mm-hmm. like, what, what about programs for the, for the guys, right. for the young men? And you don't hear too many. You don't hear too much of that. Right. But you definitely hear a whole lot about these these women conferences, these programs for young teenage girls. And, and as a matter of fact, that is all created to separate the, the women from the men and their mm-hmm. children so that the men could, one, feel inadequate and for the mm-hmm. children be prey to predators. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. where are these women, thousands and hundreds of women gathering, where, where are their children? Right. Who's watching their babies? Um, but but back back to your question. Men don't feel important. Um, and 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 I've met women that, and I and, and I dated a woman um, when I first moved to Atlanta, where she was always throwing her her degree at me. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Throwing how much money she got. I'm like, look, I'm happy you got all of that. But I'm a real man. I don't need I don't need what you got going on. I'm gonna, I'm, and one of the questions that I want to bring up is mm-hmm. when a woman, let me give you a scenario. Let's say you, Sinead, you have your own house, you have your own car, degrees, everything mm-hmm. is like up to par. And I have my own things. We get we get married or getting serious, talking about getting married. I'm not going to move into your house, even though your house may be much bigger and Mm-hmm. You have more money than I do. I'm not gonna do that. A real man is not gonna move into a, a woman's a woman's home because there's a lot of guys who would do that. There's a lot of guys mooching off women right now who completely right. depend on women as if that's their mother. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But a real man is not gonna a real man is not gonna do that. Now, what a real man such as me, and I can't speak for all men, but since I am on the show, I'm gonna speak for me. What I will do is if it makes business sense that we get it, we I'm moving to your home until we get one together. Then that's what we're gonna we're gonna do because mm-hmm. I would never want a woman to move into my home so that she feels as if I am overpowering her or have more power than her because it's my home. I, if I get mad, get out my house. No, I'm not with. You. That's that's not a situation I want to be in. If I was moving to a woman's home, sometimes mm-hmm. you know, woman scorn to get mad, whatever case may be. Oh yeah, that's how you feel. Get your mm-hmm. stuff and <laughs> get your shit. And get out of here. That's what. That's, right. That's what, that, that what happens a lot, you know? So mm-hmm. um, I'm all about equality in a relationship. We move in this together. 50-50 or 60-40, meet me somewhere down the line. We're going to both invest and make this thing happen together. I love that. I love that. And when I think about it, if, if things are so broken, if things are so jacked up, right? And being that the woman is the life giver as far as bringing forth bearing children and doing all these, these wonderful things, mm-hmm. I think mending some of these issues starts with us, right? It starts with us identifying what's really happening around us and then saying, you know what? It is my responsibility now to empower, you know, my children and to, uh, uh, you know, bring this, break down this education, bring this knowledge that I now have and teach it to mm-hmm. my kids. Like my boys, I have two boys and I'm a single mom and it is my responsibility to not break them down, but to build them up, right? And to let them understand. And this is something that my mother always sings that a man's power is not in his wallet. It is not in the things he possesses, it is in his mind. Because you can lose all these things. You can lose all this, um, you know, wealthy things, you know, your cars, your homes and all of that just by an accident, just by something, bad investment, whatever the case may be, right? You can lose all of that, but a man that is a true leader, a man with integrity, a man um, with good qualities and character, 
that you can't take away from that man, right? That's, he can that's me. rebuild that well. He can rebuild that. So when, when we're focused on what people possess and what people have, that is where we went wrong. When I heard that young lady at the nail salon, I was disgusted. I was annoyed. I was just so upset because even for myself, I, I've never really dated someone for what they could give me. Never, never, ever. I could care less what you want to give me. It's important, however, if I'm going to get married, that we establish some type of foundation. Even if things aren't perfect, let's see what we can build towards. I want to see that this man is doing something with himself, is, 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 is trying to go towards something. So I guess as, you know, as, as things progress, I think it is important for us as women to, because we're outnumbering the men anyway, is to start the change with us. As mothers, we're bearing children, it's our responsibility to teach them and to educate them about what's really important. That being said, that being said, um, how how does a woman crown her man? <laughs> Did, uh, th that that's definitely a very 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 interesting question. There's several ways a, a woman can can crown her man. Um, mm -hmm. Now, in, in, in my book, uh, uh, that's regarding the, the sexual energy. A woman can crown her man in, in one of three ways. She could, she could crown him um, by the way she serves him. She can crown him by literally putting a crown top of his head. Or she, or she also could crown him by placing her, uh, her lips on his penis. And um, lips, whether it's lips on the top or lips on the bottom, her vagina. So, a lot, so when that went... Keep a little PG. Keep a little PG thirteen. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, should I do that right now during the show? Keep PG thirteen. Yeah, keep keep it a little PG thirteen. Keep it a little PG thirteen. All right, no words, no words. No, yeah. no, definitely though. Um, yeah. You know, seriously though, that that is how a woman will crown, will crown a man. Now, mm -hmm. what what we are finding is that the women crowning frogs and not really kings. You no, know, they they Dog. like 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 you just said. Um, yeah. Women are. More materialistic now, yeah. now more than ever. Um, that's definitely not not a good thing. And so that's yeah. how they are able to get tricked by a man, a man flossing and acting as if he had mm -hmm. all this money and power and and, and wealth when she's not mm -hmm. even looking at the things of the heart, the, the, the spiritual things that matter that right. would give the relationship substance. Um, yeah. But those are the ways a woman can, can 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 crown a man: her heart, the way she serves, and where she you know places her lips because. Um, with the most powerful thing, the most powerful um, component that a woman and man can do together is sex. Right. You know, um, intercourse and sex to our to our ancestors, which I talk about it in my, in, in my book with um, you know sexual energy and sexual se sexual powers. Sex wasn't just something to do for fun. It wasn't something to do for, as a hobby. You know, it was it was to procreate. It was to it was to build. Yeah. Also, the fellowship. Yeah. There's 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 a sexual ritual that is that's very dope. You guys should look it up. I uh, talk about that um in the sexy queen chapter in my book. There's called Maathuma, and in ancient Kemet, Kemet is what Egypt is today. What they would do is they would you know man and woman, husband and wife would get together. They would light incense. Um, they will burn candles. They will be um, naked in a room together, and they will pray. They will pray that that the Creator will bless them um, and bless their union. And knowing the desires and wishes of the other person, because they're in love with each other, so obviously you're gonna know what the other person's passionate about. And right. so they pray for the other person, right? Mm. And so as, as they're doing that. And the fact that the woman, as I mentioned beginning of the show, women have the divine, sacred, um, feminine energy. They're right. able to; she's able to pull his ideas from the spiritual realm mm -hmm. into the physical. That's manifestation, not necessarily right. at that moment in time, but this this, right. this ritual was preparing them for what needed to be done. And then they'll begin to have intercourse, and and, and through that intercourse, supposedly they were able to time travel. They were able to uh, astral project um, at different um, key points around the world or around the universe. The ancient mm -hmm. um were very, very powerful, and they understood their brain power as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's something that uh, 
we we don't really are privy to these days mm -hmm. uh, because yeah. you know many people don't really a lot of people just don't read or don't right. do their own research probably just you know watch a video um for the most part but this is something that that was one ritual that that i found very intriguing and i can't wait to do that when, with my wife when i get married that is that is really intense really spiritual that let i gotta get the book um yeah that is powerful right there very powerful and for those that are spiritually inclined not necessarily religious but spiritual beings can kind of understand what that atmosphere must have been like <laughs> all right so <laughs> I can tell, listen, just the way you described it, I was already there, like, oh, wow, okay, this is, okay. So, oh, yeah, and, oh, yeah. <laughs> the, so mid, the, the midnight hour. The midnight hour, listen, listen. So, you, your book <laughs> has been compared to the NASA movie Hidden Figures. Is that a, is that a good comparison, you feel, and why? Oh, 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 oh definitely a great comparison, a uh, great comparison. There's a, there's a sister uh, named Tiffany. Tiffany knows she's an author, so... Hi Tiffany, if, if you're watching the show, um, you know she 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 she's a professor at uh, Barry University, that's in Miami. And mm -hmm. when we were on a panel together, we was on a, a Caribbean author panel. You know, I'm 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 African Haitian, and mm -hmm. she's Jamaican, and there was a um, couple other people from the Caribbean, different different islands in the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and uh, we kind of exchanged information. Um, she was intrigued by the things that I was talking about in my book, and uh, you know, so I gave her a copy and she gave me a copy of her book. We exchanged, she mm -hmm. read it. She was like, wow, your book reminds me of Hidden Figures. I said, really, I, I haven't seen it. I also didn't see the movie at the time. And I wish I did because if I had seen that movie, I would have included it. Um, but, when, but, when, but when she was telling me how intelligent these women were and how you know groundbreaking their, their work was at yeah. NASA, um, yeah. you know, I felt honored that, you know, she, she would compare my, my book with it. As a matter of fact, I went and bought the movie, like bought the right. DVD. It's, it, it's one of my, um, favorite movies. And these, these women, if, if, if you really watch them, they were brave, they were courageous, they were highly intelligent and they knew their value. And even though as educated as they were as scientists, they probably were all doctors. A couple of them actually were doctors they had a doctor degree. They still took care of home. Home was important. And, yeah. and 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 what what society is doing with with our women today? They they're making them think that you don't need a man. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? You could do it all all on your own. Mm -hmm. And we are yeah, yeah you probably could do it on your own, but chances are it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be extremely hard raising a child. Hard. Correct. It's it, it's not meant for one person. Matter of fact, you didn't have that child by yourself. Oh, wow. You didn't get yourself pregnant. You was doing right. it in the midnight hour right. or the morning hours to make that happen. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? So. Um, this this empire spirit, this I'm the boss lady, you know what I'm so saying? <laughs> Bow down to me. It's it's mm -hmm. really created a delusional sense of reality for our women. Um, yes, as a matter of fact, there's there's a lot of women that believe that they should automatically just because you know we are talking or we are in a relationship that you deserve half my empire, that you deserve. Um, to Come have all now. this time in the world when you haven't even paid for it. You haven't done anything. To help the person build it. You went there. <laughs> I lost him a little bit. Kevin, are you still there? Oh, man. Just when it was getting hot. Just when it was getting hot. Hmm, someone said home is important and should be prioritized. Yes, love that, love that. I also love, I also love um, the question, how can we meet in the middle? When Kevin gets back, um, we're going to talk about that. If you have questions, if you have questions in your... There we go. There we go. I, I was like, man, right when it's getting good. <laughs> hey, hey, you know, God gonna provide no matter what. You Listen. just keep doing your thing. God will provide. Yes. All right. So if you could get back on this on the video aspect, so they could see you. Um, okay. I'm sorry. You can't see me. All right. Let me make yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. 
One of my, Can you see one me? Of my, yes, we see you. Listen, okay, okay. When, I, when I say I need to bring you back on the show because I plan to start doing a late night show so we can really get into things. But because it's in the morning, I have to kind of keep it PG. You know, that's why. Because sometimes people are playing um, or listening to the show on their in their cars and their kids are in the car. So, you know, um, that's why I got to keep it PG. But you said some things there. So someone asked in the ch um, on the Facebook Live, they said, how can we meet in the middle? Like with all what's going on, how can men and women meet in the middle? How can we come together? What is that? I mean, mind? just like, I mean, just like anything else. If, if there's a will, there's a way. Mm -hmm. um, put your heads together. Communicate. I'm not talking about via texting, because Lord knows to me, this 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 texting society. This you know, I'm not a text head. Mm -hmm. We gotta we gotta take it old school. We're going to, we, we're gonna talk this out and and discuss yeah. what. What can we do? What are the possibilities? You know, because once you say we can't do this, your brain is going to shut down. Right. But once you, instead of looking at it as if, okay, we can't, no, we can. Um, yeah. How can we meet in the middle? How can we put our resources together? Yeah. Um, what is it that you bring to the table and I have that I bring to the table? What, what are we lacking? Um, yeah. Discuss, have, have this old school conversation. Stop trying to rush and fast everything mm -hmm, you know what i mean mm -hmm, like this mm -hmm. society got us living this microwave society thing and everything's gonna be fast paced everything just mm -hmm. isn't a click of a button on the phone or computer something's right. gonna take time to cook that's right. why you know some meals taste so good because we put so much time and energy into it so much love right. and energy into it so and, and until the, whoever asked you that question man, man or woman unless mm -hmm. they're willing to take the time to talk and communicate it, you'll never be able to put, put in anything together because yeah. why? You haven't talked about anything. You just you just right. texting and, and or watching movies or whatever you guys do, but just mm -hmm. turn the TV off, turn on some music, put it on some yeah. old school R and B, light some incense, have a dinner and talk. Right. Chill, relax. Yeah. I'm an expert at relaxing, by the way. That's very good. Yeah, and I, I also think that we need to get away from our entitlement mentality. We need to stop. And I'm oh. talking about the women's perspective. We yes. have this entitlement mentality. Like, I'm entitled to this. And no, he better can do this for me. Because if he can't, we have to get out of that. Out what are you bringing to the table? And I have another sister friend, Queen, who says, you know, a lot of times we're asking for things that we ourselves can't provide for ourselves. You want this man to give you a house and a mule, a land, the whole nine. And can you give yourself a house and a mule, the land, the whole nine? And even if, and even oh. if you are able to give yourself that, is that the only value that you place on yourself? That you are mm. worth tangible things? That's all you're worth, tangible things. If someone cannot give you something tangible, if they cannot, um, um, you know, fund your business or um, buy you a brand new car, that is all you are worth, you know? So we really need to get back to that other, you know, queenhood where we thought about ourselves more valuable, that we con that we contribute more to the table. And it's, it's, it's honestly, I'm big, I'm big on self. I'm big on who we are inside. Um, I'm not any woman that is, you know, rich or anything, far from it. I'm working towards that. And I believe that I will not change. I really do believe that because I've never placed um, value in the things that I possess. Never, Correct. never placed value in that. And until we understand that those things are just a blessing and, and, and we utilize it to, to, to pour back into the community, into society, then we're gonna continue on this cycle. We're not gonna, we're not gonna really be, rebuild this black love. So I love the fact that you, have shared so much insight. You have said, man, I'm trying to read some of these things. <laughs> yeah, the men need some credit too. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree. Men need some credit as well. You know, we, 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 really, we really have to get away from um, some of these mentalities that we have in order to really find um, true, meaningful love. And we need to see relationships bigger than what we see it for as, as what we can only get. What about what you can build? You know, what about what you can create? That's what relationships are really all about. Um, I know right. we gotta kind of wrap things up. 
So okay. I, um, I want you to give us um, some some key jewels. It could be your top three, your top five um, jewels that you want our listeners and those that are tuned in on Facebook to really consider. What would be those key jewels to getting ourselves back to um, real Black love? Well, first and foremost, we definitely have to get back to understanding who we are. Like, how can you get, how can you possibly be in a relationship and not know who you are, not know what you actually bring to the table? And like you mentioned, that that whole idea of entitlement, just, mm -hmm. oh, because I'm here, I deserve X, Y, Z. No, you got to put in some work for that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Put in some, you know, if you have a man that's ambitious as me, um, actually, <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm a little over the top when it comes to ambition, but yeah. when you have an ambitious man, see how you can invest in what he's doing. Right. You, then you, of course, you, if, if you help him build up his business, then you have the right to put in title. But right. know, understand who you are, what you bring to the, what you bring to the table. That way, he understands your value, and you understand your value because you yeah. everything starts with self first. I, I, I definitely have to say that. Another thing is, I would like to say, be careful of the STDs out here. Not just sexually transmitted um, diseases, but sexually transmitted demons. Um, I don't. I, I, <laughs> yes, I don't think. Yes, yes, I don't think people are really taking that into consideration um, in yes. these relationships because a lot of mm -hmm. us, truth be told, need an exorcism because mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. we've been through and we haven't really gotten rid of or dealt with mm -hmm. those spiritual mm -hmm. matters. But we think we we are okay because we're making the six-figure salary. We have, you know, we got it going on, you know, our bodies are, are banging and guys are, no, take care mm -hmm. of yourself first, get your spirit right, and then you can go ahead and move forward, but be, be analyze some of these guys, but when women, women have sex, they don't understand that you, a man implants a part of his DNA in a woman when he sees with her, it's actually mm -hmm. scientifically proven, it's in, some of his, some of his DNA will be in your bone, and some mm -hmm. of you women, you have too many men in your bones and you need to get rid, rid of that so how yes. do you do that um there's the there, different spiritual baths you can take cleansings you have to take of course praying having a, a very good um praying life but these demons need to be uh eradicated from your life these devils mm -hmm. because this is not a benevolent society there are mm -hmm. very, some very evil people out there there's actual witches yes. out there and, yes. when, and in order for us to get back to that black on black love we're gonna need to deal deal with um, these these evil spirits, we're gonna also need to uh, read more about our culture, understand uh, and who we are and what we represent, so so we have a good bayou system. Um, I, I and also before I look, I wanted to make sure everybody got a chance to go to my website, kevindorber.com. Yes. yes. Please check me out. Can I share my screen? Please do. Let me share my screen right quick. I wanted to. Oh what well, well I get I think you have to do it. Um. Let me see. This is disabled, but kevindorval.com, K-E-V-I-N-D-O-R-I-V-A-L. Um, as, as, as the queen is looking for my um, put my website up. All right, there um, you go. So you can share it now. I made it public. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So let me go ahead and um, this is my website here. Um, brand new website. I get tons of compliments. Shout out to Gary, who helped me out a lot with, with the website. Um, yeah. These are my books here. This is the new book coming out in September, The Winner in the Mirror. This is going to yeah, get me on yeah. Oprah, so you guys um, you know, stay yeah. tuned for that. Uh, the, the Curse Should Believe, my first book, and this book, Seven Times of Queen, Teen Desire. I do accept Cash App. Um, my PayPal, you know, just click on the link. It's very easy. Ebook, mm -hmm. paperback, hardcover mm -hmm. as well. I also have uh, crystal jewelry and um, this is my online store here at kevindorver.com. Shout out to Queen Darlene. Uh, she has artwork. So I do sell artworks, her art on my mm -hmm. website as well. And yep. um, it's just a very nice um, Afrocentric pieces. So I'll definitely support her and, 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 and what she has going on. This is her website here. Well, it's a bigger picture of, of, of her stuff. Beautiful. But anyway, um, yeah, so and check out my dope blog. If you don't got no money, if you don't, if, if you're not balling, you can't afford sixteen dollars, twelve dollars for my books. Uh, my blogs are free. <laughs> Definitely check out the blog. Um, the the ebooks are only like you know nine ninety nine. Um, support a brother, you know, because I'm definitely Absolutely. doing my thing. 
yeah, I'm definitely doing my thing, and, 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 and I plan on becoming very wealthy and rich. This is my latest blog here. Um, speaking of women, this is a tribute to Wilma Rudolph, the original Olympic black star, very powerful blog article. I have a, a blog coming out dealing with uh, reparations, so mm. check that out, and also very good. blog dealing with the mind. So that's that's pretty much what I have going on. Th thanks for letting me share my website. Again, it's kevindorber.com. Follow me on Instagram at Courage to Believe. My YouTube is banging. It's King Kevin Dorable. All my links are on the bottom of my of every web page, uh, well, especially the home web page. You will see all of the links to um, all my social media stuff. So I thought it was on the bottom. I guess it's at the top. I don't know where it went. But anyway, um, very easy to find. Uh, find me. I'm not too hard to find. Future multi-millionaire in the yes. building. Yes, that's right. That's right. Claim it. I love it. Speak it. Manifest. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. I love, I love your energy. I love what you're doing. I love the fact that you are such a powerful man and you have a great heart and you want to basically just bring us back to our roots and really empower and inspire our, our people. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for being on the show. It has been amazing. It has been a great conversation with you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Really good. Really, really good. Um, and without further ado, you know, I got to wrap things up because I got to hit the road. As soon as I get off, off the air, I'm gone. I'm gone. Gone. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but it has been amazing. It has been amazing. The state of black love, the state of black love with King Kevin. Listen, it has been great, guys. Thank you for chiming in. Thank you guys for just um, participating. I think I want to give away a book to someone who has been really engaging on Facebook. Let's see, let's see. I think Deo has been the most um, engaging. Deo, Deo, I think you deserve that book. Um, I would love to um, send her that book. She was on my show last week. She's a powerful woman, powerful African woman. And um, I think it would be great for her to have that book too. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, guys. Go ahead and get the book, Seven Types of Queens, uh, Men Desire. Go ahead and purchase the book. Go ahead and purchase the book and support, support um, King Heaven. Thank you so much. And you take care. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. And, and, and uh, my honor. Oh, the honor is mine. The honor is mine. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. All right.